Yo, 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 what it up, what up? This is your boy Super Mario, and uh, today we're going to be uh, working on mastering some beats. Uh, just finished up a project, and um, you know what I'm saying, very excited about it. Uh, me and my producer partner, uh, homeboy from, from the crib, aka Full Grown. Uh, definitely uh, collabed on a project and knocked out about six or seven beats uh, for an instrumental project. And, um, you know what I'm saying, very excited about that. Finally finishing it um, is the exciting thing. So, um, you know what I'm saying, that's a big hurdle and a big accomplishment as far as uh, getting that done. Um, so... Um, with, with 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 everything you know saying uh we just want to make sure that uh, we had a track finished and have it sounding good so far so good i'm streaming and i'm just double checking streaming um situations right now so um just give me a few <clears throat> i just want to make sure everything is uh up and running and uh we're good to go um so I don't know why this thing says uh, making beats, uh, but that's wrong. And so uh, try we're to good to go. Change that. As I uh, make that change, you guys just rock with me right now, and uh, let me make some changes to the uh, the title. It's definitely not making beats; it's uh, mastering. So y'all see what I'm doing: mastering beats. Or project instrumental project, but anyway, though, know, uh, we finally finished up some beats, and uh, we're gonna go through some, um, some beats. And um, I may take y'all through um, um, the whole mixing session and everything like that. So, um, we definitely got this saved. So, let me uh, save what I got going on and. All changes are saved. All right, so we good. So y'all watching what I'm doing right now, folks. So uh, I'm just gonna drag this window over here and minimize that if I need it. I can just bring it up. All right, cool. So uh, yeah, man. So let's get up in this piece. Um, I got a beat already done up and everything like that. Uh, this is one of the beats that uh, we actually did in person. And uh, y'all, excuse me. It's Friday, and um, getting the crunk juice prepared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Already. But um, we got to beat up. Um, we're going to be mastering in Ozone 8. And uh, these are, this is a beat right here pulled up for as um, what we collabed on. Um, I think it's one of the first ones that we uh we started working on um before we even said well we're gonna do a collab or whatnot so um I'll keep my cut right here so um yeah uh let me play this for you guys nice smooth uh, vibe to it you know what i'm saying nice intro coming in with the verse Turn off these uh, processes right quick. Yeah. So that's basically the beat right there. Uh, that's the uh, the raw wave file that we got playing in the background. And uh, we're gonna get rid of all those modules. So this is the beat right here. Now there's two different ways that I master my beats um, for distribution or sending it out to a client or whatever the case may be. Uh, one way is to 
run them through ozone another way is to work with them in studio one you feel me so um when i work with it with studio one it may be some specific things i want to add on to the beat for as uh, post-production or excuse me pro uh, pre-mastering or mastering um mastering is really not a thought process it's really about to make the song sound good okay and really get it up to spec all right so um uh, kind of like what you're looking for to get it into a loudness range you feel me and um so there's different ways you can do about it there's a plugin that i always use and it's uh it's made by nugen uh audio and um it has different uh spec levels as far as youtube spotify title and stuff like that that i really use and i kind of use my judgment on what needs to be done because at the end of the day um no matter what your loudness is um whether it be uh negative nine on the l-u-k-s uh, scale um what these digital distribution uh streaming platforms do is they turn it up they turn it down to whatever specifications that they have on their platform so um we definitely want to be in the specs that way they can make minimal adjustments you feel me um and a lot of this is really you know what I'm saying done uh you want to get your volumes um to a certain level um in the mixing phase that's my theoretical um point on it um you want to get your volumes to a certain level in the uh in the mixing phase you don't want to wait till the mastering phase where um you know what I'm saying you got um you, you're trying to make those decisions or trying to figure out how can we make this loud um so um we definitely want to um look at that situation right there you feel me so uh what we're gonna do is uh get this in the spec range or whatnot so um i have a lot of plugins that um that needs to be synced in here but i'm not gonna do that right now um but what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna do two beats and i'm gonna show you what i do and how i do it and everything like that you feel me and uh it's gonna be real extensive just kind of give you all a little rundown or whatever the case may be all right all right, so we got this beat right here playing in the background. You heard it earlier. Um, normally, what you want to do when you're mastering beats, you want to find the the chorus hook slash hook part or the most hype point or the point in your beat where you know the level is kind of like up there. All right, so um, this point in the beat right here is uh, where we got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. all right so the beat you know what I'm saying it's doing what it's doing um so uh, it, it's sounding pretty good um but it could need a uh, need a little um a little touch it up on it as well uh so we what we're gonna do is i'm gonna show you two ways so ozone 8 has this new little feature in it called mastering assistant okay and so master insistent is basically it analyzed the whole audio uh wherever you're playing at that at that point so where you starting this beat at on the play cursor which is right here okay um that's the most important part so right here what its play cursor is is um that's where it's going to start analyzing the audio and once you start analyzing the audio there uh it makes it theoretical uh theoretical um adjustments uh, within the software all right and um it gives you some methodical uh, different processes that it it suggests you use and it sounds pretty good i have to say it sounds pretty good but uh you can go back and make those changes so in this beat right here um we can go and do the mastering assistant first um because i'm talking about it and then we can go back and uh, add my two cents in it as well um so basically how to get this started if you do have ozone uh eight and you're just new to it um basically you want to start playing the beat and then you click on mastering assistant so we're going to pull that up uh actually let me start the beat first pull that up it's going to ask you what are you going for a lot of music these days are streaming 
um, you still have the CD and you have the reference. What we're going to do is a lot of music that I put out, um, it gets streamed over the internet. If you're trying to figure out what the hell streaming is, streaming is basically, um, it's basically what you're listening to on your phone from a site, what you're playing off of Facebook, what you're playing off of Instagram, uh, what you're playing off of YouTube and stuff like that, Spotify, iTunes, um, SoundCloud, all that shit is streaming. So basically that's the main platform that I want this software to analyze the audio, right? So we're gonna go to streaming and then we're gonna hit next. So I'm just gonna hit play and let it analyze that audio we got right here. And as you see, analyzing audio assistant is working. So it's telling you everything it's doing. If you want to accept that, you can. Hit accept. Bam, there you go, bro. You know what I'm saying? It gives you everything that you need. So right now we have an active equalizer. Uh, excuse me, equalizer. Um, the dynamic section is turned off, but they do have some um, adjustments made in there as well. Um, you have a dynamic EQ um, going on, um, which kind of substitute as a compression uh kind of like a multi-band compression picture it that way and then we got a maximizer all right and this maximizer really not making too much of a difference in the um in the volume but we'll get there all right so basically uh when you have all this analyzed you can go back and a b everything so so what we're gonna do is gonna bypass the track and see what kind of difference it gave us So I'm just listening and analyzing, trying to get the audio in my head, and now uh, we're going to bypass. Alright, so that's the bypass sound. Alright, we're going to click the bypass off in 7, 8. So it's really a subtile difference, really a subtile difference. It sounds pretty good, but it's a subtile difference. Now, if you cool Gucci with the subtile difference, you know what I'm saying? You can keep it and everything like that. But definitely, we are, we're going to make changes to that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and up the ceiling to about 1.1. That's normally what I do with my limiting now. I used to do point negative uh, 3, but uh, um, I do just do negative point 0.1 just to get that little bit of extra volume out of the um out of audio signal uh now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess with this maximizer but before we do that though uh that's my whole process i kind of set it up that way um i kind of go with what they recommend on the mode on the maximizer um so this beat does need a little bit of transients for us that low end we want to have that that punch on the kicks uh, and, and, and low end and shit like that. So um, the dynamic EQs, uh, I kind of let that ride because it does a real good job for us detecting what uh, frequencies need to be reduced uh, for a sibilance or anything that's uh, resonant uh, in the particular mix. And But this EQ, I like it. I love it. Uh, but we're going to make some changes to it. Uh, I love mid-side EQing. Uh, that's just me. Um, um, it does a good job what it's doing right now, but with the midnight mid side EQing, I like to listen to the mid and the side. Uh, it creates more of a, a stereo depth to it when you um when you make changes to the mid side or do mid side EQing. Uh, so let's check that out. Check that out for a second. So basically, we got the mid going right now. Uh, we on the mid section right here. And that's illuminated. We're gonna solo that. Now you may notice a change in the sound. We're listening to it in the mid section, kind of mono. And what I'm gonna listen to is kind of like what I hear and what I need to improve on or what I need to take out. It's 
so in that mono section, I think I need to boost up the the, the mid, uh, excuse me, the highs. So we had about 17 cycles, 17,000 cycles. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, while that is already on the high shelf, I'm gonna go ahead and use this bell, and um, I'm gonna go with a band shelf, and I'm gonna make that Q band width very wide. All right, so very wide. I'm gonna go to 0 0.5. Before I do that, um, there's a button, a keyboard shortcut that you can use on the EQ section if you hold down Alt. Okay, and um, what it do? It uh, uh, single out the ref uh, resonant frequency so you can zone in on what frequencies you need to um, focus on. So you see here, that's my resonant frequency for the highs. So right about uh, twelve thousand. So I'm gonna remove the, uh, remove the frequency to twelve thousand. Uh, change that to yeah, 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 yeah. So that's at zero. So that's about where I want it. I got about a two two dB a gain. Um, so let's check the side. So basically, that's all I can hear in the mid, uh, in the mid slash mono section. The low end is real smooth. The mids is kind of like they rock and they rock, and I can hear them. And that high end is really crisp. I can really hear that now. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the side view. And uh, basically you can link all this shit together. But um, for us with the edits that you can do. So if I boosted up that seventh band um, for us that uh, 12,000 cycle uh, 2 dB boost uh, using a, um, a bill, sh uh, a bill uh, shelving um or whatnot i can make i can link it and it can adjust the side as well um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, gonna adjust the side and we're gonna only solo the side and that's what i like to do i like to solo each part mid and side solo so i listen to the side information that's basically extreme left extreme right kind of conjoined together in a stereo wide type shit. um And so basically I'm listening to the all the abnormalities to the track for as uh individual instruments uh per se. So I can hear the highs pretty good. The mid range is pretty good in there. The low the the bass, you ain't gonna hear the bass. The bass really should if you hear any bass in the in the in the side information, go ahead and cut that shit out. Go ahead and get you a low cut or a high pass filter and cut that shit out. You feel me? Uh, but let's put a high shelf on that seventh band and the side information. And we're going to use a vintage, uh, a vintage shape. And we want to use. Let's adjust this right at about here. That's what a curve, the FFT curve is about at about 6,000. We're going to boost that just a little. I'm going to give it about a five bandwidth. Okay, so they kind of hype the the high end just a little bit on the, uh, the side information, okay? All right, let's turn that off and hear the difference. See how dull it sound? Turn it back on. Sounds pretty good. So that's pretty much it right there. Hold on. I think I got somebody at the door. Hold on one second.
right. Alright, folks, my bad. That was the uh the janitorial service. Uh they come in here and then uh they try to hook me up with certain things and whatnot. So I had to answer that. So sorry about that. Alright, so um to get that on popping. Um so yeah, uh that hyped up everything. Now we're gonna listen to it in conjunction with each other. Uh, we're gonna take the solo off on the side, and now everything is gonna be joined into one. Okay, so uh, let's check that out. Yeah, I can already hear the difference in the in the track already. So uh, let's turn off the whole EQ. Five, six, turning off the EQ. Alright, let's start the back. So the EQ is off. As you see. Alright, we're gonna turn it back on. And seven and eight. All right, cool. So you basically you saw the difference in the uh, in the track. Uh, it kind of opened up just a little bit. Um, gave it more kind of like a if you're really listening to it, gave it more depth um, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that that's pretty good right there. Uh, let me check, make sure I'm still streaming. All right, cool deal. So uh, yeah, it gave it kind of a little bit more depth um, in the beat. Um, so. Um, Hold on one second. All right, cool deal. So uh, it gave it a little depth. Uh, now, as far as this, this right here is the dynamic EQ section, and basically, um, it's basically just kind of doing some compression on the resonant frequencies that it detected. I know. I'm